Hey guys, today I'm gonna to share some awesome information about Holly EFI data logging. That's certainly one of the high selling points of the product. So today we're gonna to go over how to manually capture a data log with a laptop. We're gonna go over how to view and read the data log and correlate that information to settings in your global file. We'll show you how to create and customize views that are tailored for what you wanna see when you open a data log. And finally, I'll show you uh, some practical application of this information where I'll walk you through a real world scenario I had with this car and how I was able to pinpoint and correct the problem in a matter of a few minutes with just a global file and a data log. So stay tuned, it's gonna be cool. Section one will capture a data log manually. Uh, first thing you need to do is ensure that you are connected with your PC to your ECU. Once that's occurred, you can click this notepad, this clipboard icon to start the data logging. And then when you're finished, you just click it again. Um, it will auto name this for you. If you choose to do that, just click save and tell it to overwrite the existing file. If you name it yourself, it won't prompt you for overwriting. Section two, we're gonna talk about viewing and reading a data log. If you've just started your Holly software, you can go straight to open data log, but I recommend you don't. Uh, I recommend that you open the global file that was used to create the data log. Go ahead and open your global file. Once that's open, then you can go to the data log menu item and say open data log. Find the, now you'll notice that it took me into data log configs, uh, that's not the place that you need to be. So you wanna go back one level and go to data logs. It, it just depends where you were last as to where it will pop you into the directory. Uh, but you wanna be sure you're in the data logs directory. This is the data log I wanna see. So it brings us in at basic fuel, which is a pre-configured Holly views that you can use. Um, so this green bar here is the throttle position sensor. So this is a drag race pass. So basically we wanna select that whole area. And the way that you do that is you pick an area, you left click and you drag your mouse across to where you want. So now we're zoomed in on this. Uh, basic fuel is not a good, good setting to look at this type of thing. So we're gonna to go to the drag race view. And with that, you can see um, we've got RPM, real-time clock, uh, AFR left, duty cycle, oil pressure, all this stuff. Just a real quick how these work. The top one turns the line on and off. Uh, so you can do that for any of those and all of those. Um, and this bottom one will add or remove the scale for that particular item. I find that the scales just kind of clutter up the screen. Um, and if you click anywhere on the graph, you can see any of these values, they will change. And if you use your left and right arrow, you can step through. So if you'll notice all the values are changing as I step through. So I don't have a lot of reason to use the scales, so I generally turn most of those off. So when we started, I said open the global file first, and I would give you the reason later. Well, we're at the point where I'm gonna tell you that reason. By selecting an area anywhere in here, you can simply go back to your global file and see exactly where it was at that point in time. That can be for spark, fuel, whatever. So it really helps you track down problem areas. Uh, in this particular situation, let's just make up an area. We'll say uh, air fuel ratio was kind of funky right here. It, it spiked a little bit. It says it was 13.1. You can come over here, look at your fuel right where it was sitting and you can tweak that if you want to. Uh, this green line is called the overlay. Uh, you can turn it on and off, but it's really useful because you can see everywhere in your selected area over here. So everything we're looking at, this whole data log, which is a whole drag pass, this is first gear, second gear, and third gear. 
This is an eighth mile pass here. This green line goes through the whole pass. So you see everywhere in the fuel map that it went during that pass. Same thing with timing. You can do the same thing. So that's super useful. Really helps you dial in all of your settings. Section three, we're gonna talk about these views that you have up here. So these are all the ones that Holly comes default with pre-packaged for you. Uh, I find myself sometimes having a bounce back and forth between two or three of them to figure out what I want to know. Uh, Holly has added this edit view. So you just click that, you come in here. Now what I like to do first thing is take the default set of views, AKA a config. This is called a config, a data log config and do a save as, and we're going to call it improved default. So now I can have my own set of views that are tailored to what I want. So the first thing I'm going to do is come in and say uh, clear all. I don't want any of these. And I'm going to blank out all of these because I don't want empty ones. So there's no confusion. I'm going to call it custom drag and you just simply grab what you want in your view and drag it over here you can do it in whatever order makes sense to you um you want you know probably going to want afr left you're going to want uh ignition timing or i am i hope you are um, you're going to want a map value probably. It's, it's totally up to you what makes sense and what you want to be able to see in one shot. But I like battery voltage just in case. Uh, I like oil pressure and fuel pressure. But you drag whatever you want over here. And when you're done, you simply say OK. And it'll say, oh, well, this has changed. Would you like to save it? Yes, I'd like to save it. So now, the only thing I have is custom view, or custom drag, I'm sorry. If I wanna add additional views to my config, I just click edit views, and I've got space for seven more, and I can also tweak my existing one, all by just dragging them in here, creating them, and saying okay. Section four, practical application of this knowledge. Uh, to set the stage, I made some repairs to the car, and, and the first pass was a noticeable issue that it was down a couple tenths and had a noticeable power decrease uh, as it climbed up in the RPM. I had ECU logging turned on and downloaded the global and the data log, and this is what we found. You know, you're generally gonna look for some kind of issue with fuel or timing when you're noticing power decrease or some kind of mechanical issue, but I didn't, I didn't suspect a mechanical issue. So, you know, and just a quick glance at air, flu, air fuel, um, it's about in the commanded area of what I'm looking for. So it jumps around a little bit, but it's all fine. But if you check out this timing, um, we're wanting about 25-ish and yeah, we get that until about 64, 6,500, and then it drops down to 20. You can see this, these big dips. So I see that it's doing it, but why is it doing it? Um, so the cool thing is you can come over here and look at the spark table. And uh, as you can see, I've got the overlay on. So there it's off. So we've got the, act, the overlay on. And in the past, you can see that it gets out here into this area that it's never been in before. Uh, so generally, if I was tuning wide open throttle ignition timing, I, was, I would just change it in the top four rows and uh, that would work. But it just, maybe due to weather or some little change in the car, um, it's down here one row lower in the fifth row. So you can see it goes from 24, 26, somewhere in that area, depending, 
It, it drops at 18 when it hits 6,500. And it just carried that out as far as it would go because the top RPM here was 65, which I've since corrected as well. But um, never, I would have chased my tail for a long time to figure out what was going on here. Uh, I still don't really know what changed to cause it to run out of these top four rows, but the car runs the same number it used to. So I, I don't really know, but so that's a, a huge shout out for the value of this data logging and man, it can really help you solve a problem fast that you might fight with for a long time. That concludes our intro to data logging with a Holly EFI. Uh, hopefully you found this useful and informative. If you did, please like and subscribe. And as always, we appreciate you guys watching. Thanks.